Hi guys, Alice Snake here. How's it all going? Yes, and how's it all going indeed? It is Sunday, Subject Sunday once again, and we've pro probably got something a bit more of a opinionated topic this week. But something just to talk about the video in the background, we have Uncharted 4 Multiplayer Beta. I've actually got two games to sample from you today. The very first game is actually my very first game on the Uncharted Beta since they actually did the stress test. And the second game is a very nice flawless game where I just didn't die. So, nothing bad about that. So, yeah, keep it fun. It's nice and interesting gameplay, I suppose, on either end, um, just to see what it's all like. Um, it feels quite aggressive, actually, for what I played on this game. But um, watch it, hopefully you enjoy it as well. But the main reason why you've clicked on this video otherwise is probably looking at sort of the state of the UK and what... I don't know, it's, it's a little bit, I say, it's more of an opinionated topic I want to sort of talk about, but it's kind of sort of just a generalised UK topic about the United Kingdom, um, but as we may know, uh, heavily sort of publicised is that the government at the moment, the Conservative government, which is led by David Cameron, ideally would like to leave the UK or gain a lot more control over what we can do as a, as a country outside of the EU. Um, they seem to think that we're heavily quite constrained on what they are letting us do. Um, as a country that is supposedly seen to be that, we always pay these funds back into the uh, EU which not all countries do so, yet they get some sort of specialised treatment or don't necessarily do what is necessarily required to be in the EU, uh, realistically. Uh, so in some cases in regards to this, I can understand why necessarily our country would like to leave the EU in regards to just gain a little bit more freedom and control of what we can do as our own country. Um, and I was seeing a few sort of interviews for what people are sort of uh, mentioning about as a pro to necessarily leaving. But one I didn't sort of necessarily understand that sort of as a part of gaining control back with say lawmaking or just basically just general control for what we can do with our country. Um, this Indian woman, I don't know if it's necessarily her place, but uh, again I don't want this to be too opinionated. It's, but it just seemed very odd that a uh, woman... Um, Again, her parents were kind of immigrants into the country. Nothing wrong with people coming in, immigrating into the country whatsoever. But she feels like that England's for English people in the sense that um, we need to leave as we, as England did the, um, oh shit, what was it called? The English Empire, the British Empire, that we controlled like 90% of the country and she says that England and Great Britain can be that, or the United Kingdom, should we say, can be that great powerhouse that once again ruled the, most of the world at the time. Which I don't think, as that, as a pro to try and leave the EU is necessarily the sort of the right way of going about it. I, I can understand, again, from the point of view as control over our laws um, and certain things like that. Because I think this is quite heavily with the law uh, the law aspect that we want to control is the immigration and just the fact that a lot of people can sort of quite easily get into Europe and then from there get into the UK um, that supposedly so many foreigners and as I say foreigners foreign people to the United Kingdom can quite easily come over here and work and supposedly a lot of elderly people uh, probably I'm not necessarily more naive to the fact that there is other cultures that we are quite a multicultural nation that people do sort of go into other countries to work um, feel like that they're taking our jobs again sort of a balanced aspect from this yes they are possibly taking our jobs but some of the jobs that they are doing very often the people that are coming out of school for in, in England and the United Kingdom quite clearly probably don't want to even contemplate doing the jobs that they are doing so that's possibly a lot of factory work a lot of cleaning jobs um which i don't think a lot of people necessarily growing up um children in the united kingdom would want to do such a thing they've got higher aspirations to be people like doctors um oh, for goodness sake adam what you're doing so like scientists and things like that they, they just don't want to do sort of like the sort of jobs that do keep the world turning in effect like 
say dustbin um, collection that has to be done or else um, but we probably see more sort of foreign people who are happy to do a job in that sense because it will pay better than what their country would would happily take up that opportunity which again sort of comes back to the control aspect with sort of the money regards uh, supposedly there's not necessarily a strict sort of minimum wage throughout the whole of the EU where the um, for those who are probably watching outside the uh, um, uh, Eng uh, United Kingdom as such uh, we do have what is called the minimum wage and although by no means is it necessarily a good thing for what it offers but it's definitely better than what some other countries seem to offer people for their wages really so at least there's something that there is the law saying that there is a minimum that you can earn and most companies have to abide by this in, in, uh, as it is the law effectively um, but the fact that that is more than what other countries are offering for their um, citizens most people will actually come over to the United Kingdom and take up on this opportunity to have the minimum wage which is being pay better paid than elsewhere so um, again in that aspect it could be seen that a lot of people from outside the country are trying to come here for a better life which is true um, and they would very much find this better life I would find it uh, I think to, um, here if obviously their country isn't as uh, well off or um, monetary terms could be better I suppose um, I suppose in that sense we are fortunate that we do have this relatively strong country that we live in that has that political powerhouse to do stuff like that to make things fair in a sense but to gain that little bit more extra control is it seems like people want to make Britain for Britain out of this EU fiasco um, don't really want to go as far as sort of naming people but there is someone that I am like I do know who's quite a fan of leaving the EU just simply because of this fact that they seem that oh they're taking our jobs and I mean in most cases I think people would quite happily go through doing some of those jobs but to get on some of the aspects that um, probably again from control uh, border control from immigration uh, there was this interview I saw on question time on the BBC where this girl gosh she probably couldn't been anything older than sort of 16 I would say maybe even 15 she's quite a young girl um, and she was fighting for the fact that um, the UK should necessarily leave the EU um, simply because there are, say, doctors in India that are qualifying and highly trained in their in their job, and very knowledgeable in regards to sort of health and care and things like that. Um, and simply as they're not necessarily India being in a part of the EU, they have to jump through so many loopholes to get jobs over here, get to work, um, and so many sort of finite checks that they have to pass every single one. Yet yeah, someone who's not necessarily looking to do much for the society and if they can move over here and possibly take advantage of our benefit system could do that quite easily. They just got the free movement to do so within the EU. But again, this this is kind of a two-way street. I'd like to think that if it was necessarily a reason why, say, the UK needed to vacate its citizens to be elsewhere to have a better life have a safer life in regards um i think that's something again that's kind of got to be a two-way street which maybe together working with the eu could offer that to everyone in retrospect but it's kind of seemed to be a bit more small-minded in my opinion to what everyone else is necessarily thinking um another thing kind of again with this person that i'm i know of they like the ideas of this donald trump and uh trying to run for president for what he stands for that ludicrous ideas that he would happily build a wall between uh, the United States and Mexico to make sure that none of the immigrants can actually enter the border and I think things like that just seem so radical ideas not not a good idea really because you'd kind of want to be creating alliances as opposed to closing people off which that's half of my opinion on the EU aspect Although we're stronger all together with them, we seem to bend over backwards for what they do, but I think kind of at the end of the day for what we're necessarily offering, it's fairly much worth it what what we necessarily input into the uh, 
into common market for that. Uh, again, it's a safety aspect as well for the free movement. For us, it is pretty much a two-way street. I mean, it's going to make it a lot difficult, a lot more difficult if we need to necessarily move. Uh, if the UK was ever to be sort of attacked in a war. I mean, it's <laughs> all but true, really, that what can happen. We know what can happen, and it could happen. Uh, with all these missiles and Kim Jong-un having target practice on another country if he really wanted to. Although he's probably not too much uh, to worry about. But, yeah, it's quite controversial. There's a lot of pros, there's a lot of cons to a lot of this. And I don't necessarily think the sort of pros that they keep... Uh, badgering on at the moment to say that we should leave, we need to leave, we have to leave, is the option that we have. I, f I think that <laughs> there's just too many variables within this uh, situation that can affect us in such severe ways leaving the EU or s well, I think I can see it probably more detrimental leaving than staying. But again a lot of the people sort of my age range I've noticed as well sort of mentioning online are pretty fairly much pro EU altogether but the problem is that supposedly that as a country for what we'd like to do we'd like to vote yes or no in the, this a referendum it's supposedly only a hundred days away and I don't think everyone's well educated on this situation and I can think that there's this um, sort of England is for England kind of person and they would quite easily just say no to everything and I think they're very sort of blindsided in that regard to what can happen. Although I say I'm not quite fully aware of all the facts in regards to what is necessarily happening with all this EU shenanigans but I can honestly see that necessarily the UK's independence in this regard isn't necessarily going to be the strongest to what we can do blindsided of more independence to more control to more what we can do as a country just yeah it's just it just seems there's far too much really to lose than what to gain by independence in this regard um yeah again it's kind of sort of going over more old ground with this but It'll be, it'd be interesting to know, um, I know Henk being Dutch and uh, other people would probably watch this. Uh, I'd be interested to sort of know what your opinion, if you think that it's necessarily a detrimental loss, if you think the UK was to pull out uh, from the EU. Does that necessarily affect your country or could you see that necessarily being an impact of maybe for better for the EU? Um, do you think that our country doesn't need to be there, doesn't have to be there, um, or if it is something that so we rely on. Uh, again, uh, could have gone a little bit more into depth into the research for sort of our major output for our um, gross domestic products, uh, GDP as a country, to elsewhere in the common market. I don't really know what our sort of best value for what we necessarily output outsource as a country. So I know we, um, I mean, food production's quite high over here. Uh, I think they said something about um, gas production. That no, I'm getting confused here. Uh, no, it was meat production. It was that I think as a country we outsource ninety percent of it, and then there was something arguing. So this news story is completely convoluted. I think in in its regard. But they were just mentioned saying that uh, there's a lot more sort of food that we do output, which will lose agricultural work in the UK. So um, again, for farmers, we're, if they are again losing out on sort of outsourcing their product, what's what's going to happen? Again, we're going to lose a lot of agricultural work in that regard. I was I would imagine. But uh, yeah, my opinion's been probably one-sided on this. Uh, I mean, I try to, if I can give you the opinion that I'm relatively open-minded with what's going to happen but they are just there's nothing solidly mentioned to what are the true benefits what are the true cons to the situation what what's necessarily going to happen what will happen what are we going to do with 
either way what will continue to happen to say I don't think it's as an issue but a lot of people it is so we're at the end of the video, uh, you just seen both of the gameplays, the last gameplay was the flawless one. Um, hopefully, in the next few weeks, what I'm trying to plan to do is actually do a setup video for one of my um, Subject Sundays. Uh, just really show you how I work and how I'm necessarily going about doing this YouTube business for you. But thanks for watching everybody, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe, and I shall see you all later. Take care.